So far in this section on plotting geographic data, we focused on how we can take our maps and we can distort them or change them so that we can plot our data in different ways. But in today's video on the one chart at a time video series, we have a video on proportional symbol maps from Priya Krishnu Kumar. Now Priya used to be at the Los Angeles Times and she's a graphics and data editor. And it's a technique I've seen her use multiple times. And so I'm very glad that Priya was able to send in a video on the proportional symbols map so you can learn a little bit more about this particular technique. Hi John, and thank you for having me. Today I want to talk about proportional symbol maps and why I often prefer them for map-based data visualizations. Um, so a proportional symbol refers to using a size shape, uh, most commonly a circle, which is scaled on a data value, based on a data value, rather than shading the entire geographic region itself. So let me show you a quick example of how this can work um, really well. Okay, so here we have the New York Times presidential election results for 2016 when Donald Trump won. Um, so this is what's known as a choropleth map. Uh, this shows the results for the winner in each county and the county shape itself is shaded on the margin of victory. And while this is a useful way of looking at the election results, it doesn't always give you a complete picture. Looking at this map makes it seem like it was an overwhelming victory across the entire country for the president with wide swaths of the country shaded this deep dark red. However, if we switch to a proportional symbol map, we'll see a different view of the results that may tell a more complete story. Okay, so here the size of each circle is proportionate to the amount that the county's leading candidate is ahead by. And while both the choropleth and this proportional symbol map are technically accurate, this map does a better job visualizing areas with denser and higher population, uh, which the choropleth map doesn't account for. Proportional symbol maps are often really well utilized in elections results mapping because it helps tell a clearer picture of where a candidate picked up higher total vote margins. So when deciding whether or not to use a proportional symbol map, it's important to take into consideration what you're trying to show. If there is a major population vari variance across the geographic area, which there is in the United States, using scaled symbols can do a better job of representing high density populations. They're useful for showing margin sizes as well, like showing where a candidate overperformed or maybe underperformed their expectations. Here, we can see that Hillary Clinton racked up large margins in urban areas, uh, but she was outperformed by Trump in the majority of the smaller counties in the Midwest and the South. Um, another example of proportional symbol maps being used to great and I think unique effect is in this map by Bloomberg. Um, so this is a map that was published shortly after the 2020 election. Um, I think it was published just a day or two after. And this map I think is really cool because it uses triangles to show the rate of coronavirus in each county combined with the margin of victory uh, for Joe Biden or Donald Trump. So if we look at this real quick, we can see that, you know, like the size of each triangle gets larger based on the rate of the coronavirus in that county. And it's darker red or darker blue based on the candidate's win margin in that county. And I think this is a really unique way of looking at the election results because you can see that Donald Trump won by large margins in many counties that were most affected by the coronavirus, which is really interesting and tells a really different story than just like a standard choropleth map or a regular election results map would. Um, I really enjoy playing around with proportional symbol maps because, you know, oftentimes it's easier to default to a choropleth map or something like that. Um, but these symbol maps often tell a more nuanced story than just simply shading a map based on a single data value. And I hope this video encourages you to give them a try. Well, thank you for having me. And thanks Priya for that great review of the proportional symbols map. I'm sure you have seen maps like this out in the world and I hope now you know a little bit more about this technique and how you can use it to visualize your own data. So come back tomorrow, we'll wrap up this section on geographic data and move into our next section of data types. <laughs>